You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. Good evening, AfterBuzzers. Good evening. We are Hi. here at the AfterBuzz TV studios, giving you everything American Horror Story. I am David Scafidi, your host for the evening, joined by probably one of the best-looking panels here Ooh, in AfterBuzz. Hello. That's a toot and I <laughs> own horn. Sweet. Toot toot. <laughs> <laughs> and these are your hosts. Go ahead and introduce Hello, yourselves, ladies. I'm Sarah ladies. Huggins. Uh, my name is Jillian Lev. And I'm Oriana Leo. We are doing American Horror Story Season 3, Episode 5, titled Burn, Witch, Burn. And so she did. And so she did. Before we get started with the episode tonight, and before we start discussing things, I feel like we should give out a special shout out to our amazing, amazing fans. Amazing fans. We are reading your comments, your YouTube comments, the stuff that you guys come up with as far as predictions, answers to our questions are unbelievable. Really incredible. Yeah, like speechless. Like I, I'm, I, it always makes perfect sense after I read it. I'm like, <laughs> how did I not put two and two together? But you guys always finish it. It's awesome. Every time I see a tweet, it makes us happy. Let's just refresh, uh, refresh the audience before we start. Mm -hmm. You can find me at Jillian Leff on Twitter. Where can we find you? At Miss Oriana Leo on Twitter. I'm at You Can Call Me Skiff on Twitter. I'm at Sarah on the Go, Sarah with an H. And I just, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, and I just tweet us. We yeah. love it. Yeah. yeah, tweet us your comments, predictions, anything. I have to give a couple <laughs> shout outs um, to Craig Legg, all the way from the UK, Yay. is a Hello. fan of ours. Um, we have Austin Dowdy, is a super fan. Oh, love him. Um, <laughs> and then also Isaiah Stevens, I asked someone to find MM's heels, those fantastic heels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> found them. Where are they from? Well, he said they may not be the same ones, but the ones that he found were uh, Steve Madden. Oh, okay. But they're, I oh. mean, they're dead ringers. That so even if it. they're not, they're dead ringers. And and if anyone wants to know, I'm happy to retweet. Just tweet me. I'll send it to you. <laughs> um, and we have a fan, John from New York, who actually predicted and called Who Blinded Foxy. And he referred back to Myrtle Snow's veracity comment about you were blinded by your mother and how oh. she's obsessed with the truth and that you failed to see the truth of your mother's actions. And I get the goosebumps right now. Yeah. Round of applause. So, yes, Yay. round of applause. Yay. Good job. And I tweeted out that we really need a name for our fans. Yes. Yes. Fans and of, we couldn't I couldn't come up with one. Like I was thinking about it all day. Jillian, you had an idea. You did? Yeah, but you know what? It's been such a long day. I forget what <laughs> it was. Wasn't it um Fan Coven? Yeah, I fan think, coven. I think we, it was the Fan Coven. That's the unofficial name. But if you guys can think of something better, please tweet us suggestions and we will pick, we will vote. Our coven will vote. Yes. Um, and yeah. we will pick what to call you guys because you have been totally digging all of our nicknames. You're sticking with Frank and Kyle and MM, and we love to see the nicknames used in the comments. It's awesome. Yeah. And Foxy. And, and Foxy. Foxy. <laughs> and as a host, it's one of the most rewarding things to have such great fans that are picking up on our lingo. Yeah. And you guys deserve your own nickname. I do. Think. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I mean, two weeks ago we were number one. This past week we were number three. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So much. So keep it up, and we look forward to hearing from you and tweeting with you in the near future. Let's get into this. Let's get into it. I yes. feel like this entire episode this week was a lot about redemption and reliving your past and making amends and and trying to move forward from terrible guilt. It was probably the most gruesome episode as well. Oh my gosh, that we've seen to date. Stomach turning. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I, I kind of I kind of dug it. Is that weird? So what what's funny is that every episode, Jillian covers her eyes, screams, yeah. but then peeks through them. She doesn't want to miss anything. Right. <laughs> she was, is, is it happening right now? Is it? Tell me what's happening. What's happening? Okay, so we find out, you know, we're we're learning a lot about people's past in this episode. So we find out a little bit more about Madame LaLaurie's past. Yeah. Her disgusting, gruesome past <laughs> that we find out more information about how her daughters hate her and how she tortures poor people, especially that lovely boy Jacques in the beginning. <laughs> I think okay. Especially, oh, especially men that like her daughters. Exactly. I feel yeah. like, okay, despite <laughs> the fact of her methods of torturing this young boy, I feel like Testing it's, his manhood she's essentially doing. Totally right. justified. Explain. Well, testing, you know, to see whether or not someone is right for your offspring. I mean, in yes, a weird in, in a way. very strange way. Okay. <laughs> yes, I but, agree with you. You know, people still do it to this day. I mean, granted, they're not sticking your hand into like a <laughs> bowl of eyeballs or like intestines. A, a tub of and intestines. Does everyone remember that? I mean, I remember I was the kid, first of all, that told everyone at school that there was no Santa Claus. <gasps> and by the That's logic. Ter- what? <laughs> Yes, and my Who are no, you? My, because Excuse by me. logical deduction, okay, um, there's no such thing as you know. I made all these things in my mind about how there couldn't be Santa Claus. Therefore, there was no Easter Bunny or Tooth Fairy or anything. And I went to school and I told everyone because I thought <laughs> everyone's gonna want to know this. <laughs> so I was the same child that told everyone those are not eyeballs; they're grapes, and those aren't intestines. That's spaghetti. I'm not scared. I was wow. that child that at the little huh. Halloween fair. I wish that you were in yeah. Madame Lollery's torture chamber. <laughs> would have been so my stomach awakened. turned and I was eating some oh, Chipotle right. for dinner <laughs> while we were watching no that, more. and I almost it almost came out. Well, you screamed, "No more food for me!" No, yeah. went right into the garbage. No, it because it showed brutal. how they took the eyeballs out of the poor yeah. slaves. Yeah, that yeah, that was it was brutal enough just to see the floating eyeballs, but to actually see the her ripping them out with her hands. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was Carnage. interesting to find out sort of what the daughters truly thought of their mother, because in the beginning we got sort of a, a hint that you know there might be a little bit of tension between them but nothing really this concrete and when she drags them upstairs and locks them in cages okay and says, break a bone if you have to break the leg if you have to and they did i'm going to feed you <laughs> shit at christmas okay christmas morning but David, you said yeah. something interesting when that when that scene started. You said, "Oh, she set them up, right?" Yeah. And we were like, "What?" Like I. Well, because it seems like to me that okay, she tortures everybody, mm-hmm. right? She's torturing her own freaking daughters, and she says she's going to leave them in there for a year, and it's right. like, "I'll let you out next year on All Hallows Eve, and we'll see how it goes from there." And I feel like in the first episode, the pilot episode. Mm-hmm. That's where it starts. But she talked about how the reason for the whole reason behind Bastien right. was because he did something horrible to her, to her daughter. And I'm now thinking, did that even happen? Right. Well, they had, they did have like some sort of. They affair, looked at each affair. other. Affair, some sort of affair. And in the pilot episodes, he said um, that she coerced him. And so mm-hmm. she, Lallery, of course, blames Bastien. But I have a feeling that she has set them up to. What's making me think that the that, that with Madame Lollery locking them in the cage happened after the Bastien incident happened is because she calls oh. for Bastien and another slave right. to bring right. their daughters up, and we do not see him as uh, the the Minotaur. Oh, I didn't right. even pick up on that. So yeah. I think that it was. So this was pre. That's pre, pre quote unquote. Yeah, you know, right. correct me if I'm wrong, fans, but that is my understanding. So they were locked in there, but when we see them as zombies coming back, they look very young. Like the hair is a lighter color, it's not gray. So that that sort of leads me to believe that they died when they were young. Well, yeah, because well, Angela Bassett hung them. Remember? Oh, remember. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She hung the whole family. I well, forgot about that. Sad. Yeah. And we can, I mean, I don't know, like, I know in the premiere they had a date, and they gave us a date tonight. They did. It was 1833 tonight. I don't remember what the one was. What, we in don't the have the all documented? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How yeah. disappointing. Yeah. But, I mean, let us know. I know you guys will. I, yeah, I mean, but I would say you're, 
Absolutely right. Clear. Yeah. I feel like it is the, the the premiere episode was a year later from this date. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Hmm. That's when they let her out. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she really didn't leave them. Let them In out for a year. Yeah. Huh. Oh my. Let God. us know. Let I'm us sure know. Yes, I'm sure you guys know. Yeah. But aside from that fact, she clearly, when we jump to the future and she's standing at the door, she does feel remorse at this point. I mean, she spent like a hundred years or so. It's a lot Give or take than one that. or Give two. or take a couple decades. She spent a long time underground, and she had a lot of time to think about what she had done mm -hmm. to her family and whatsoever. And she does feel remorse. I mean, we see her feel remorse for that, and not only for that, but a continuation of her remorse for Queenie. Right, right. and her treatment of Queenie. Exactly, because she treated Queenie like a, a princess this episode. Yeah. yeah. We need to make sure you are all right. I am responsible for right. you. Get back in the bed. I will get you ice, and then let my zombie daughter in the house. And get me a Coke. <laughs> yeah. Get me a Coke. That was the best line ever. And, and get it was really interesting to see her interact with her zombie daughter, Borgita, yeah. of trying to conjure her daughter out of this walking dead. Right, which but, was not happening. Right, but it was ironic because we just got to see the snippet of what she had done to her, mm -hmm. right? So I'm thinking, why would you want to conjure <laughs> out the hatred right. that your daughter has for you? But I mean, it's a mother-daughter. We've talked about this yeah. in previous episodes of this, the mother-daughter, you know, no matter how horribly they might treat each other, there's going to be love there. There's going to be, you know, we see with Fiona and Foxy later that there's love, there's remorse. Right. You know, if you didn't treat each other the way you wanted to be treated, but your family. Right. And I always say, no matter how much you hate somebody, to hate somebody, you have to love them first. Interesting. Well so, said. Yeah. You Any, can't hate someone you don't love. I totally exactly. agree with you. Yeah. Should I quote Real Housewives? Please Blood do. is thicker than water. <laughs> <laughs> All right? It's very true. That is so <laughs> true. It's very New Jersey? I am from New yeah, Jersey, but that was an yeah, awful yeah. Jersey accent. <laughs> I've, I've lost it since I started hosting. Call your mother. <laughs> Call your my mother. mother. It's fine. <laughs> Let's get some coffee. We'll talk. So, but, I mean, the interesting thing to me is that we do see her trying to conjure her daughter out of the zombie, but Nan says earlier, they're dead, I can't hear their thoughts. Mm -hmm. So, right. I don't know what she thinks, like, I don't know why she thinks that she can conjure life out of something that is the living dead. I think, I mean, you're not thinking rationally at that point, you know what I mean? Like, she's not, not, like, she just sees, like, her daughter, the shell of what she is now, you know, right. and like... And for a moment, I was thinking her daughter Brigida was in there for a second. Yeah, me too. But then I thought back to what Nan had said of she couldn't hear anything. But no. then there's an, then you get into this sort of philosophical argument. Okay, they're dead. They've been brought to life. Do they have souls? Do they have? Right. Do they carry some their old experience with them? I mean, clearly she was out for her. Like, I mean, she went to that house. They and were like, all out for her yes, because of what Madame Laveau right was doing right with her spell, but. With Nan, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead with Nan and Lou. No, I'm just thinking do. Nan's looking through the window and they're dead, I can't hear them. And I'm just thinking she can, she has a crush on Luke. Mm -hmm. She can hear what Luke's thinking. Yeah. She can hear what everyone's thinking. And yet she's still focusing on the dead people. Is, well, not just that, but he, <laughs> they were attacking. the dumb, you know, cute guy runs out. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of kids. Which was well, I mean, if you're in the, an outsider in this world, let's yes. say, and you see zombies running around, what are you going to think? It's Halloween. It was a I mean, lot of them, though. and there were kids like out an there, army. and there were kids out there. I would have been, I would, I'm in the same boat as him. I would have been like, yeah, whatever. It's just a bunch of hooligans. And she runs out to get him. Well, because he stupidly runs out, and then we see Angela Bassett say, "Begin." Her eyes go white, and she's well, and he talked begin. more than he's ever talked in this episode. Yeah. Lots of groaning and like, you know, <laughs> pain noises. Scared, yeah, scared noises. My thinking was just like, Nan, I guess I'm confusing clairvoyance and being able to like hear people's thoughts with being smart. Because to me, going after the guy and going into Cordelia's car, which is not a safe place, right. is really stupid. Well, he's hurt. Yes, right. And she so can't get him back into there. the house. And she wants to save Stupid. him because she wants to, you know, <laughs> she likes his man bits. She, oh. we, you know what? She's a woman. I okay. I spent out my water. I, I think <laughs> that we're gonna find out more about this sort of weird attraction that they have because clearly there's something going on. 
I think it's she's, a little bit more than just niceness from the guy's end. She's pure. I, I just really think that he has feelings for her and just by, I mean, just think about it. I mean, not that you would save the person that you like from flesh-eating zombies, totally but mm-hmm. you do things, yeah. you do certain things for the people that you care about. Yeah. So things. that was stupid things, exactly. So that was sort of the way that she thought it out, and I guess the first thing she saw was the car, and that was the only thing that she could do, so she dragged him to the car and hopped in, and you know what? Thank God for Zoe. Right. right. I mean, and speaking <gasps> of other stupid people. We started liking Zoe this week. Listen, <laughs> Zoe, okay. So, <laughs> the beginning of the episode, she's wearing that dumbass hat. That's no. her signature piece. I just, I mean. Thaisa's signature I, hat. She wore it in season one. She's going to wear it in this season. I right? like it. I think she I looks think cute she in looks it. she looks cute in it, too. Yeah, I enjoy I the I just brimmed, am very happy yeah. to see her sort of grow a pair this episode. Right. Agreed. But stupidly, she does come out and bangs pots and pans together. And is like, over here, over here. And then is shocked that they're chasing her. <laughs> Can we agree on? Agreed. I, I know. I'm being silent. She's like, what am I supposed She's to like, do? She's like, oh, no. Oh, oh no. Now they're gone. looking at me. Who oh, knew no, that Ding was going to happen? She runs into a shed. I thought it was a tunnel. Like, it was like a, the door, the oh, ending to a tunnel. To mm-hmm. But, like, she finds apparently a chainsaw in there. Yeah. Killing it. And goes. Killing it. <laughs> Killing it. Literally. Chainsaw massacre. Okay, straight up chainsaw massacre. I could not. I mean, everyone knows how much I hate Zoe. I hate her so much less <laughs> after that. Yeah, it, it that was, was pretty amazing. badass. She chainsawed a zombie in half. Yeah. That was awesome. And. Cutting heads uh, except off. for Jillian didn't see that part. No. Um, she was I'm covering sorry. her eyes. I, lit- I saw the chainsaw reach up above the male zombie's head, and I was like, "They're gonna cut it yeah. in half." Like, I, I can't, can't look it. at it. I can't look at it. I would really love to know how they did that because it looked. It looks incredible. incredible. Amazing. Yeah. I actually wrote in my notes, Zoe. I circled it and I wrote, "Grew balls." <laughs> And then I put arrow, chainsaw, zombie in half. The only inconsistency that we had with her chainsawing the zombies is that when Borgita is in the bedroom with Queenie and Queenie is trying to kill her by voodooing herself, she cuts her neck and sand comes out. Right. And then Lalaurie, you know, fireplace pokers, pokers her and <laughs> she dies. <laughs> But when Zoe is chainsawing them, there's blood spurting everywhere. Yeah. Why? Fans. Please. Please yeah. tell us. I mean, I'm sure it was for dramatic effects so that she looked like but a badass could, and she's covered in blood. You could have, like, blood. violent sand pour out <laughs> that could, like, Wait. it would, like, it could, like, scar you. <laughs> like mud. Yeah, no, like, dried. Because I, I, the feeling I got from the gravel coming out was, like, she was so old. Yeah. Her, she was right. so old. Wow. And I'm thinking, if you chainsawed up some really old zombies, like, could be, like, really old shards of gravel zipping out like of you. And it's, like, shrapnel coming yeah. out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like, that could happen as, <laughs> as much as a zombie could come to life. I also feel like some of the male zombies were the guys that um, killed the little boy. That yeah. hung the little boy. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't as old. It wasn't like the 1830s. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was people that were more recent. So good call. You know, maybe yeah, because I feel like the last they, guy, they were repeated. Yeah, the, the zombies the last, were repeated. The last guy that was uh, still living. I, I think that that was the ringleader. Um, so if that I was only. 50, 60, 50. Yeah. yeah, but Years one of those ago. people was like a lady dressed as a flapper, so she was like 20s. Right, yeah. so there was like all kinds of. So kinds of there's something there. to do with how long you've been dead yeah. and if you have blood or not. That how much makes decomposition? Sense. Maybe. I thought they drained your blood. When they, they do. Right? They do. Okay. 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 Now they do. <laughs> but when we're talking about black magic here yeah. and, and voodoo. You never know. Yeah, I'm going to be corrected by a fan. I'm sure black magic and voodoo are not the same thing. No, they're not. Speaking (laughs) of magic and Zoe, uh, girl turns it out. New power. At the end. um, (gasps) Supreme, anyone? Supreme. It's looking that way. I've been saying it all along. You have, and I've been denying. Team Zoe. I'm still going to hold out for... For Misty Day, for somebody else, because I just don't really like <laughs> is her. Misty but Day Zoe's growing. Too she young, is. or not too young, or too, too old. old. Sorry, too old to be. Do like we? A sudden I don't think supreme. it matters like how old you are, as long it, as you can do the seven wonders or whatever yeah. right. it's called. Seven seconds right. in the closet. I don't know. I mean, I ah! love seven, seven minutes in heaven. Seven minutes in heaven. Whatever yeah. it's called. Seven minutes in heaven. That's yeah. amazing. 
if I think all that matters is that you can do the seven powers. Right. Yes. Seven, what, what are they? So this is the thing. We I keep know. thinking seven sacraments, wonders. but that's, that's like totally different. I thought different. there were seven wonders. There's a, or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we're wonders. just going crazy. So we we know <laughs> that Zoe uh, is a black widow. We know that she <laughs> has the power to sort of overtake the undead. And as Marie Laveau says, there is a strong witch in that coven. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is, because at that point, she fell to the ground. Right. Mm -hmm. And her friend was like, oh, are you okay? And for all we know, <laughs> no, that I just could fell. be one of the powers, too, was that she yeah. essentially broke the spell. Yeah. I have so, a question. Is the Black Widow thing, though, a like a major flaw, like kind of like a... Like how MM had the heart murmur situation. Like, is being a black no, widow it's like not a, a health problem? Right. No. But it's, it's, it's a power because you can just screw your way through and kill people. Right. But that's the only right. way that then, it has manifested for her at so this far. point through okay. her vagine. And also, <laughs> yes. but it's very possible that she has <laughs> other ways of manifesting the gotcha. same. Power. Also, a fan tweeted. Um, I'm sorry that I don't know, remember who you are, <laughs> that perhaps she was responsible for the resurgence of Frank and Kyle. That's that's what I see. Yeah. But that she didn't realize it mm -hmm. because it's through the breath. Although we just saw Fiona touching a right. child. I so, think the power of ugh. resurgence comes from other things because um, I don't want to you know, fast forward too much to the end of the episode, but we see resurgence with touch again. Right. Right. But so, I mean, depending it's on It's hard because it that's how Misty's power has always been shown to us through her hands. Right. But right. Fiona did it in with Queenie through her breath and right. then this episode then through, through touch. Hands. Well, if you yeah. think about it, um, you know, obviously Fiona is the supreme, right. so her powers manifest in, in multitudes. You know, we really don't know what she has and what she doesn't have. Right. She is the, the all-knowing, the all-powerful. So if that's any inclination of what Zoe is, is about to sort of experience, then yeah. we're going to find out some crazy shiz about her, and I can't wait. Yeah. Yes. I'm really curious, like, what came over her? Because to me, she's this like spineless, little, boring, little just speck. Who what dust, came over Zoe. Zoe? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> everyone yeah. was freaking out, and she but, was like, but, "Someone needs to take charge." But yeah. see, to me, it's normal for her to go out and bang pan pans, and then be like, "Oh." oh I'm in trouble now and have to run away. That would be normal, Zoe. Mm -hmm. But this like sense of empowerment, and then to really to say go where you came from or whatever she says. What does she say? Go to your uh, nature. Your ultimate in form. In your right? nature. Be in your nature. Be yes. in your nature. Which I think is perhaps foreshadowing. Foreshadowing because she didn't kill him. She told the zombie to be in his nature. Right. Which essentially puts him back into his original state. Right. Which could mean a lot of things. That's true. I wonder why Endless just things. him. He was the only one left. He was the only I one know. left. Well, the, well but we also have she to could look. have walked around and talked to everybody. Well, because like, I think at that nature, point, it was she do or die. The chainsaw, the chainsaw yeah. died out. And then at that point, the chainsaw died, and she was looking out for herself. It was she had life, to figure something. It was life uh, or death, and finally, the pressure was on. You know, Fiona had talked about how she loves a witch that can fight. Yeah. That was not the first thing, first time that she said that. And I think it really took a life or death situation yeah. for Zoe to be like, get I'm my act together, like, <laughs> let's yeah. do this. I think it's you're time. absolutely right. Speaking yeah. of life or death, this week, Fiona showed us a very different side of herself. Mm -hmm. And I personally was shocked to finally see it. Compassion. Where did it come from? I mean, we well, see that Foxy... Well, she was drugged out. Well, I mean, <laughs> it was rooted in it was rooted awesome. in guilt. It was the yeah. wrong well, sort yes. of compassion. It was rooted in guilt. Yeah. I'll give you that, but it was still there because she did a really amazing thing for a stranger. For no, yeah. for but here's the problem: it wasn't for no reason. It no. wasn't for no That's reason. That's the problem. Right. It wasn't just the selfless act of charity. It was like projecting. It was that she she was loopy. Right. I remember we were going, what's wrong with this hospital? This looks right. like, I kept thinking, this looks like season two. Okay. Like a horror yeah. hospital, yeah. But the guy in the diaper, we don't know if he's real or a hallucination, because we don't know if that black figure was a real or hallucination right. at the moment. Right. Grabs her and bear hugs her and says, you didn't throw the acid on her face, but you might as well have. Right. Whoa. Whoa. That's Lots a major realization to have. Yeah. yeah. So she does... 
we find out that Foxy um, has had absorbic acid. Is that what it was called? Sulfuric. 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 It absorbed. Sulfuric. I made that yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. It, we'll it, that's that. called the skiffism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. I love that. Hashtag, Hashtag skiffism. I like that. Hashtag skiffism. Oh god, I love you. <laughs> god, you get me on. Okay, so she gets sulfuric acid thrown in her face. It goes through the optic nerve. Um, she looks frightened. They save the eyes, but she's blind. Yes, which like, I, I used think to sell. Um, I used to sell drugs as a yeah, pharmaceutical sales rep to eye doctors, eye surgeons. Oh, so wow. I can tell you that is that is physically possible. Yeah, that you can have fully like functioning yeah, kind so of she can move, eyeballs. She can't see. Like they could have saved the eyeballs, Ooh. but um, damaged the optic nerve, meaning there's no connection from the eye to the brain, so no vision. Okay, and no sense of light. No, so nothing. they're kind of just like floating no, in there. There's just eyeballs, and there's nothing connecting the brain. Yeah. So there's dead. Wow. But she still had vision, didn't she? Right. Mm -hmm. So Hank, of a different kind. Of a different kind. So let's finish with Fiona though. She brings a baby back to life for mm -hmm. a woman only after she says, I'm going to be there until the day that you die. And she makes it, her say it. She makes yeah. her say She's it twice. She's uncomfortable. This woman is crying. I got scared. I thought she was going to kidnap the baby at first. I, I did too. Yeah, I, like I was like, oh my god. And then I didn't even know it was stillborn. And she, as soon as she said that, I knew she was going to bring it back to life. Did you guys? Yeah. Yeah. It was, I like, kind of had quick. like a lifetime movie alert in my yeah. mind where I was yeah. like, she's going to take the baby and run. And yeah, I know me this too, story. Me too, me too. Like, I've seen this too many times. On lifetime. Cordelia can't have kids. She's going to take yes. it. Yes. Like, yeah, I, I totally thought she was just going to kidnap a baby. I thought, oh, she feels so guilty. Yeah. And that her, ch you know, yeah. and she's finally going to do something nice for she's her daughter by stealing a baby. a baby and bringing it back to me life. Too. Twisted. So twisted. Anyway, it was a touching moment. That it was. Happen. Nevertheless. Exactly. The intention behind it. But it was. It is bizarre that she she randomly comes across this room. She puts this woman into a really uncomfortable situation. She's she wasted. kept making her <laughs> repeat things. She's wasted. Yeah. You're right. She is. I mean, because she ran out of medication, finds the medication closet, steals some drugs, and is just like haphazardly this choking down good. pills. Yummy! I'll take one of yeah. these and one of those and one of that, and here's my flask, and I'm gonna wash it all down. And, and you, what did you say? You said good for you, and, yeah. I, and I thought you were talking. I thought he was talking to me, and I go, well, thanks. And he's like, not no. you, silly. <laughs> I mean, because isn't that everyone's ultimate dream to find the medication closet in the hospital yeah, and just, just like haphazardly just take stuff? Again, viewers, skiffism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess it's just my dream. Then. Not a popular <laughs> thought. Um, but we do, uh, we do see compassion in other sorts. You know, Fiona sort of standing by Foxy's bedside, being with her, and then when Hank comes in again saying that she smells bullshit. Smells bullshit in his pockets. pockets. Like what is in and those And tells pockets? him that you have 15 minutes and then you can go your own way or my way and I prefer the latter. Mm -hmm. And literally like you can go like leave forever. Yeah. Like yeah. you better, don't bother coming back. You better he leave. does seem to really love Cordelia to me. Like he Ugh. does. I I I think he's a sociopath. I also I think do he's too. a sociopath. I agree with all of you, but I also agree with you in, in yeah. the fact that I think that he's he genuinely loves her. But did you see emotion on his face? Like when he I, when she said, "Oh, here comes I the know. crocodile tears," I was like, "There's no tears at all." No. Well, I, I think like when someone says that, you don't. You crocodile tears don't are cry. fake tears. Yeah. But yeah. I didn't see any tears. Like right. I. I he, you know, they get into an argument, and he doesn't even look at his own wife. He doesn't even register that she's hurt, and then. I just, it seemed kind of fake to me. Like, I, I really bought her version of the story. I do too, but the thing is, is that he's talking to Foxy. She's clearly not awake, mm -hmm, right. whether or not she's in like a medically induced coma or she actually is in a coma or she's just sleeping. But he's talking to her like she can hear him and he's saying, well, it's really, really nice. Sociopaths say yeah. nice things. That's true. <laughs> I know. That's true. And they're handsome, and then they have sex with you and treat you in a hotel room. Like, who knows? Yeah. Totally. Who knows? It happens. They to meet in chat week. rooms. That's <laughs> true. That's Thomas true. Kincaid chat rooms Christian where chat all the room. sociopaths oh, yeah. hang out. <laughs> Watch out. Uh, Wait. <laughs> so that was where I kind of had this amazing realization, like, realization though, about that veracity. Because I had to yeah, that was I awesome. had to Google it, and veracity essentially means to to live by the truth. Like, yes. you know, to, to live by the truth. And there's all kinds of ways that you can express that. But that was what Myrtle Snow 
spoke about in her speech when she said, Cordelia, you've always been blind to the ways of your mother. So Hank touches her, and she She's open eyes, flashes of him having sex with Alexandra Breckenridge. Mm-hmm. She has. She, she can, now has she can vision, see, but yes. only the truth. Right. And I know so I have the goosebumps because I'm just thinking She's about the implications. See so many things, yeah. That she probably never. And how many see. other women were there besides her? And how many men? And how many well, men? Okay. We don't know. Oh God. Can I know. say I read? I th- it was a couple of our fans have said something, and I read something else. Like a, it wasn't like an official article, but I read something else that was saying that. Hank is, or they believe, they think that he is a witch hunter, that he is there to I also like, destroy read that, the coven. That right. there was, no. there's a character, there's a couple characters that are supposed to come in. Right. And that one of them is a witch hunter. And that would make sense. I mean, they did, like, in the article I read, they did bring up a lot of points, like the fact that, like, his gun in last episode had a silencer, yeah. like, only a professional does something like that. Oh, good. Like, he could be, like, a random serial killer, but let's face it, like, he's probably... Well, and also, that's a great that's a great point. Why would he want to even stay with Cordelia? Like, it doesn't... To me, I don't right. believe that he loves her, but I believe he feels that he needs to be close to her. Right, right. He's always leaving. He's never even there. But yeah. for some reason, he needs to be... Like, it's business. There. Right. But he would have had the chance to have already done something to her, and why wouldn't he have taken it by now? Maybe he's, he's waiting a witch for hunter. a major moment. He knows what she is capable of, mm-hmm. but he which also, isn't much because he's he never seen her use her powers. Doesn't know what she's capable of. Right. Like when you're yeah. put into a high pressure pressure situation, like look what happened to Zoe. Right. You know what I mean? Like you never know what's going to happen, what sort of powers you can turn out, and I get that. You know. Uh, Cordelia is not the supreme, but she also could be sort of keeping these powers in because she hasn't been using them. She yeah. makes potions and, and those sort of things, but who knows what she has and what she doesn't have. Agreed, but I don't know that that would stop him if he were a real witch hunter. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he's not the witch hunter. Maybe, maybe he's not. just a crazy, another right. crazy character, serial killer, sociopath. Maybe he gets his rocks off and enjoys his power when he's not with his wife by killing other people. <laughs> you know, it it's could, normal. It could be that simple, but <laughs> you know, he wants to feel powerful. So I, why not? You know, fans, what do you think yeah. about Hank? What because do you think? we don't Let get to know. see very much of him. Yeah, and we're really kind of grasping at straws yes, here. Yes, we are. But if you've read spoilers, yeah, don't spoil don't it. Don't comment yeah. the spoilers. Yeah, because we want to watch it with you too. Because we want to yeah. watch as well. And Yay. figure it out as you guys figure <laughs> it out. Even if you read the spoilers. Now, when you guys saw the black cloaked figure go down the hall, what mm-hmm. did you think? Well, because of our fan, and, and now I'm blanking on the name, I was like dead set on the fact that it was Myrtle. Same. And, and it was, so. Now, the second time that we saw the cloaked figure was in the hospital this week. Mm-hmm. And we don't know whether or not that was a hallucination. Right. At the, mo- at the at time. The, at the time. Right. Or something real. I have a feeling it was a hallucination, and it was sort of just Fiona's way of convincing the council that in her brain that this Myrtle definitely did it. Because we still don't know if she actually did I do it. I believe she did it. I believe, I believe that she, she did. did do it too, but because she sort of sort of admits to it and sort of admits to she is who being else living she admits. in New Orleans. Why, who else walks yeah. to, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but who else walks to their own death like that? Right. If that's not guilty. Uh, it's it's Ryan Murphy. We don't Let, know. Let's play, don't let's play know. devil's advocate yes. for a second, okay? So we have the, yes, Myrtle's guilty. Yes, Myrtle's she guilty. She does not say anything. She goes along with it. Okay, she's guilty. What if she's not guilty but goes along with the guilty verdict because she cannot handle it anymore? Fiona has tortured her her entire life, and it's literally only so much a person can take. So clearly she's realized, I am never going to get my way. The way life is, I'm never going to get my way, so why not end it now? Or she knows the truth, and she isn't going to, to turn on whoever did it. Possibly. But I so, believe she did it. I, I feel like there's like absolutely no way that she didn't do it. I me. feel like she's guilty of 
something because she admits right. to that. She admits to being in New Orleans mm -hmm. and right. living under a pseudonym, mm -hmm. Jennifer Woolley, <laughs> which is a Veronica Lake character from some film. I'm married a witch. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, good pseudonym. Yeah. But My question is, where are the photos from the hotel room? Because Fiona snapped pictures. On yes. her cell phone. So why did she not just show the council the photos? Because I don't think she wanted... To remove the evidence. To remove the evidence. she was, like, breaking in. Yeah, breaking and entering into a motel, but nevertheless. Hmm. But, well, I guess her way of the evidence was having Queenie burn her hand, so... Well, so right. that's Which what, wasn't really necessary Well, that's me. what kind of it confused was, because me. Because it pushed the council It put to the, the nail on the coffin. Step. Yeah. It really did. And she was like, okay, fine, you know what? I'm going to go, but I'm going to go proudly. So at least she she does say that. she She's admitting to guilt, but not to guilt of hurting Foxy. And she says, you know what? If I'm going to die, I'm going to die a proud yeah, woman. I go, I go proudly to the flame. And it's yeah. something that we've seen throughout history. Mm -hmm. With Like, I'm not admitting guilt. Like, I've done what you say I've done, but I haven't done anything wrong. Yes. Right. And that's what is confusing is, she took, we learn that she took care of Foxy. She yes. took care of Cordelia right. when supposedly Fiona gave her care of her daughter because Myrtle couldn't have one of her own. Well, Fiona left for most of Foxy's life, let's say, and Foxy was left at that school. Right. And whether or not we know who was in charge when Myrtle, uh, when Fiona was a student there. I mean, it could have been Myrtle, and she sort of maybe looked to her as a mother figure. So right. it seems really unusual. Like, why would Myrtle do that to her? Right, why like, would Myrtle do that to Fiona? As much as she hates, you mean Foxy, ah, as much you. as she hates Fiona, could she really hate her that much that she would hurt this someone that she cared for as a child? But we do see that moment in the council meeting where she is like furious yeah. at her that you don't see the truth. Yeah. And like I don't know, I agree. Like I think she's guilty, but I also think that her intentions were probably good and she right. just she cracked. Fiona broke her. Well listen, I, we will find we out. Will find we out. will find out. Because yeah. Misty, the return oh. of the love of my life, <laughs> brings her remember. back from the dead. I wish she came her in charred remains. I wish she charred came remains. in with a um with a sound, yes, I wish she, she came in with a soundtrack. Oh, I know. She should just have Fleetwood Mac like on, on her shoulders. She as looks her amazing, like a boombox. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I was yeah. thinking more like gauzy <laughs> scarves flowing right. in the wind, but yeah, <laughs> I'm still waiting for Stevie Nicks to like be in an episode. That Ryan Murphy, what are you doing? Yes, dear Ryan, <laughs> that would be incredible. We need the original witch. Oh my that would be god, awesome. that would be great. So she brings her back to life, and I'm sure she's gonna, you know, fix her up with the mud, the swamp mud. Right. Yes. But gosh, what is she gonna look like? Yikes. Well, I mean, Misty was burned. Yeah. I know, but... We still don't know that story. Yeah. Yep. We still don't know how Misty came back. Because Frank and Kyle, she fixed him up, but he still looks kind of rough. By the way, where is he? I know, totally I gone. Him. Not with Misty. Well, like, no. the fans thought, yeah. I guess. He, he could be in her bed, yeah. just laying there. Just going, going, Why Rrr. wouldn't he have gone for a stroll with her with the bulls? A stroll? Or like a, like it's more like yeah. a. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, if she's going for a walk, why didn't he go with her? No, I agree. I don't. I think he's running around in the woods somewhere. No. Like a I think banging, he's his head, banging his head against trees. Yeah, mm -hmm. eating squirrels and. But well, we also purpose. have to think of the time frame because right. it was it was like okay, it's basically a day. He disappeared, and it, it was it was basically like mm -hmm. it was basically a day. So. He could be close, you know. He is a very slow walker. Right, um, true. <laughs> true. Very. Except for the moment that he left the house, and oh, and then he just Zoe disappeared. Yeah, yeah. And he that didn't he was bump gone. into anything, break anything, left no trace. But he it was, was gone the one time. Then. Super swift. He was super yeah. swift. The rest of the time, he was very awkward. Yeah. Maybe he found a skateboard. Maybe that would be cute. Ooh. Frank and Kyle or a gets an accessory. <laughs> that but that's great. basically it's our kind of episode amazing. this week. Yeah. It was. Is there anything that we missed? It was good. It was good. Yeah. It was quite um, squeamish yeah. for me. And, and especially this week, what we tried to do, we sort of took what the fans said into consideration. Uh, let us know if you like how we recapped the show. We sort, yeah. of went, we sort of went in order this week because a lot of you were asking about it. Maybe it's easier for you to follow along and remember. So definitely let us know. But I have some news and gossip, and I think you yeah. guys do too. Yeah, let's we jump do. into it. Yeah. Buzz TV News. 
Okay, so I am going to take the American Horror Story renewed for a fourth season today, officially. Um, FX came out and said that they got a 13-episode order that will premiere in fall 2014. Nice. Very exciting. Um, The people at FX are amazed by what Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk have done with this show, how they keep turning out new things every single time. And it was also revealed that Ryan will let us know what the fourth season is going to be about in this season. Oh, really? Um, He he drops a lot of hints. Um, It may be very small, but we will sort of have an inclination of what season four is going to be about. And we do know from my news and gossip last week that Jessica Lange will be on board for season four. So exciting. What if it's Minotaurs? (laughs) (laughs) Or zombies. Or zombies. I'd like Uh, to add on to piggyback. Mm -hmm. Um, I read in Deadline Hollywood, and thank you to super fan writer, producer Ian Westland for sending this to me. Uh, Deadline Hollywood, they talked about the the season four renewal, but they're saying that Coven is averaging 7.74 million viewers. Wow. Um, and highest. it's on pace to set a record as the highest rated adults 18 to 34 program in, on FX ever. I believe it. I believe yeah. it too. So, I it's mean, incredible. all hail to the great Ryan Murphy. <laughs> For reals. What else we got? What do you got um, so, I was super pumped about this, and I know Jell is also a super fan like I am, but Connie Britton gave an interview with Rolling Stone. And she said she's been talking to the producers about possibly coming in this season as a guest star because she is filming in Nashville and it's close to Louisiana. So um, I'm super, she said she's trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure out schedules, but I would be like, I would die. Like, I love her. And for those of you who don't know Connie B, um, she was (laughs) Coach's Live, Tammy Taylor on Friday Night Lights. Amazing. Uh, She's also Raina James on Nashville and she was in the first season of American Horror Story. And she's actually, like, I was surprised because she's one of the only people from the original cast to not guest star on any well, of the I other seasons. Have we seen After se- season one, she didn't oh, want yes, to be in season two. What, really? I think she started mm-hmm. doing Nashville, though. And she that started doing why. Nashville right after. Because you're right, Dylan yeah. McDermott made that, yeah. had that one guest yeah. appearance mm-hmm. that was great mm-hmm. last season. I would love to see her come back. Yeah, and I did too. read in the article, I mean, she literally said she really wants to yeah. come. She's asked the pr- like yeah. she's asking to come. They're like in talk. And because she moved to Nashville and she's kind of like they're really close. Oh, like yeah. I make it work. I'd love to see her come back. Me too. Would She'd love would to make see a great witch. And would. you know, we know that because they took a hiatus in shooting that yeah. that's actually physically possible. Right. So let's just cross our fingers. Yeah. fingers yeah. Yeah. And we do know that the finale date for our okay. show is January 29th. I didn't know that. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Good to know. So that means there's going to be a few breaks over the holidays. Absolutely. So we won't all be here on Christmas. Boo. <laughs> and New Year's. What Thank about you. Hanukkah? During well, Hanukkah. Hanukkah's yes. on Thanksgiving, around Thanksgiving oh, time this year. So interesting. Okay. We'll still be here. Do we have a yeah. better Jew on the panel than you? No, it's me. You're the not. only Jew yeah. here. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. Here, I'm a wannabe. I'm a, a wannabe Jew. Jew. Well, we're um, all wannabes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, just a bad Jew. So I don't know about. Um, let's jump maybe into we can predictions. Yeah, let's do some yeah. predictions. Oh yeah. And now, you're after both TV. It got warm in here. So we didn't get a preview. <laughs> Wait, are we burning right now? Burn yeah. yeah. We, we are on we fire. We are on fire, fire in here. here. We did not get a preview this week, so we're going to have to go based on Blind. our own We're going to have to go thoughts. blindly. <laughs> blindly into the abyss. Yeah, fans, um, I don't know. We don't know why <laughs> there wasn't there a preview for this one, week. But... Is there going to be an episode next week? Do we have a break for a couple of weeks because of Thanksgiving? It's kind of early. It is very know. early for a Thanksgiving break. And normally when there is a break, they'll say it coming in up two in weeks. two weeks. Mm-hmm. They'll right. give you some kind of morsel to feed on. So if anyone knows, please let us know. Well, what would we like to again. see for mm-hmm. next week? I'll go first. Yes, please For do. once, I have some predictions that okay. I wrote down. <laughs> um, I think that we're going to see Foxy will see a lot of things. So I think that her new blindness is going to lead to a new vision. Um, and she's like going that. to see the truth and it's going to be ugly. Uh, especially about her mother. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, especially since Hank touched her yeah. and she saw all the things about him, I mean, that's going to lead to a whole other storyline, especially with Fiona trying to step in and finally be a good mother to her. Well, with Fiona's touch, I can't imagine what what Foxy's going to see. And my other prediction is with Zoe, I'm not getting on the Supreme train, people, okay? I just, I'm holding out for Misty Day, but... 
the be your nature, I'm I'm predicting that that is going to be a very a huge power that maybe multiplies into other powers because it's not just killing. It's really to be able to set any being kind of into their natural element, whatever that means. I feel like that power is more about doing what you say. Whatever mm. you say. Yeah. So my prediction is that that's going to grow. We're going to see more of that. I like okay. that. Me too. Um, well, uh, I love that Misty Day was in the end of this episode. So Misty Day has always been seen as an outcast, right? Mm-hmm. Myrtle Snow has always been seen as an outcast. So I have a feeling mm-hmm. that they are going to band together to try to take down the coven. And she will finally Ooh. have her tribe. Oh my mm-hmm. god! Because the reason why Misty likes Zoe so much is because I feel like she viewed Zoe as an outcast because she wasn't really in tune with her powers and everything. Right. Mm-hmm. But now that Zoe is sort of left and her powers are manifest, I feel like she is in the need of an outcast, and I don't know if she knows that in Myrtle's charred state on the ground, but I think that they're going to find a lot out about each other and realize that they are one in the same. So, Fantastic. I think they are going to be besties. I like that. That's a Cute. great prediction. That is a great one, Sarah. I really only have one thing to add. I think someone next week will find MM and realize that she's up oh, there. Oh, she just, lost, she just lost an arm. She's we didn't dead. even talk her. about oh, it. Yeah. She she's in a box. She smells and she lost an arm. And but I think <laughs> someone else, I thought someone was going to discover her when they were each instructed to pick a room tonight. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh no, here we go. Someone's going to pick the dollhouse and she's in there. But um, I think someone will find her. I don't know who it's going to be, but I just, I feel like. I don't know. I follow Emma Roberts on Twitter and everything else, Instagram, everything. So, like, she's been shooting a lot of episodes, so I feel like there's a lot of MM to come, and I feel like that's going to come sooner than later. So, mm-hmm. tell us. David. The only real prediction I have for next week, it's not even like a prediction, it's more of like where I think it's going, is that I feel like next week we're going to be focusing a lot on Foxy and her yeah. recovery. Um, and Hank? And possibly Hank. He is a man after all. He may not have any place. Right. He doesn't exactly. make the cut. So I think it's going to be more about recovery next week. So it's going to be Foxy. It's going to be Luke, which is our next door oh, neighbor, yeah. recovering oh. in the relationship okay. with Nan and him. Good theme. Um, mm-hmm. And may- possibly like the recovery of the relationship between Fiona and Foxy. Okay. Okay. Like any more it. Frank and Kyle? Not yet, I don't think. I feel like you're you've, you're hitting the nail on the head somewhere with Misty building her own little like coven. So I feel like Misty's not going to be in next week's episode, but she's going to be coming up in a couple episodes with a healed Myrtle. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. Where can we find each other? I don't know. You have my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> you you can find me find on Twitter and Instagram at you can call me Skiff. I am at Sarah on the Go, Sarah with an H on Twitter and Instagram. I believe I'm Sarah Bear, S A R B E A R six two seven. You can find me on Twitter at Jillian Left or on my website JillianLeft.com. And make sure you find Oriana and I on Woo-hoo. Sundays on Hello Ladies, our HBO after show. And we have a couple special guests. Ooh, that's the last exciting. few episodes before this. Season, or yeah, uh, leading up to the season finale. And I'm Oriana Leo. You can find me at Miss Oriana Leo on Twitter or Oriana Leo uh, at Instagram. And please tweet us. Please. We love, we love hearing from you guys. We are fan coven. We love yeah. it. So from everyone here at the AfterBuzz TV family, we'd like to thank you, and we'll see you next week. Good night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Already? Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.